So we're a publicly traded company. Um, so I just draw your attention to this safe harbor statement. I will be making some forward-looking uh, observations and comments. So Stem Cells Inc. has pioneered the discovery and the development of a first-in-class biologic uh, human neural stem cell that's highly purified, expandable. It self-renews, it's non-tumorigenic, and it's an all allogeneic uh, procedure, so homologous use into brain, spinal cord, or eye. The cells are derived from uh, human uh, fetal brain tissue. In vivo, these neural stem cells are restricted to the CNS lineage, and their mechanism is multifaceted from replacement to neuroprotection. In the animal world, the cells have been shown to do some remarkable things, restore loss function and spinal cord injury, neuroprotect host hippocampal and cortical neurons, myelinate axons in the shiver or mouse, which is a hypomyelination model, and preserve vision in a retinal degeneration model. So the way I like to think of these remarkable cells similar to an active pharmaceutical ingredient, except we call them an active biological ingredient, from which we can derive multiple products. And of course, you only turn them into mul multiple products when you have specific uh, regulatory frameworks, processes to produce the cells, the data you garner from trials, and the product itself. So to date, we have four INDs open in the United States, and we've conducted trials uh, in Canada and also in Switzerland. The clinical translational agenda for these cells uh, encompasses all three elements of the central nervous system. And in the brain, we've completed uh, two phase one, two studies, one in a lysosomal storage disease and another one in a hypomyelination disorder. In the spinal cord, we have completed enrollment in a thoracic spinal cord injury trial and we just this morning announced an initiation of a phase two study in cervical spinal cord injury. I'll talk about that more in a moment. And then in the eye, um, our focus here is on dry age-related macular degeneration. We've completed enrollment in a phase one, two, and we plan to open up uh, a phase two study later this quarter. What have we learned to date in the clinic? Well, we've dosed 37 subjects to date, up to a billion cells into a human patient. The cells themselves are well tolerated. Very importantly, we don't observe any inflammatory response post withdrawal of immunosuppression. We've evidenced that the cells endure. We've data from um, the Batten's trial where the cells are there two years post transplant. And we see evidence of engraftment, deep migration into the brain. In uh, hypomyelination in Politius Merzbacher's, we see de novo myelin in four out of four patients and modest changes in neurological function. In uh, spinal cord injury in the thoracic region, uh, we're seeing uh, multi segmental sensory gains in complete uh, thoracic spinal cord injury patients. This is interim data, and this observation is in four of the eight patients reported to date. Importantly, um, multi-segmental gains in the thoracic region could well correlate to meaningful gains in motor function in the cervical region where a single segmental gain can have significant implications for motor function. And then, by no means least, in dry AMD, we've reported out uh, a reduction in geographic atrophy in the rate of progression and also gains in contrast sensitivity with a measurement of visual function. 2014, we're transitioning from phase one to phase two studies. We're embarking on a clinical development program with human neural stem cells that's unprecedented in scope, dose, and diversity of indications. We're now going into larger multicenter controlled phase two studies. And the results will provide significant clinical insight into the therapeutic potential across a range of CNS disorders, not just these two indications that we're studying in phase two. I just want to pause a moment and talk a little bit about the dry AMD program. So uh, AMD, um, dry AMD represents about 90% of the total AMD population. And the most advanced form of this is geographic atrophy. Um, it 
this, this condition uh, progresses silently and slowly until you get to this uh, state where you lose central vision. And it affects nearly 1% of the population in the United States. Geographic atrophy refers to loss of critical cell layers in the eye, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And it affects sharp central vision, which is needed for reading, driving, and other common daily tasks. There are, of course, no effective treatments to arrest the progression of geographic atrophy in dry AMD. And as I mentioned, we plan to go into a phase two study shortly. I want to take a moment just to look at the architecture of the eye. In the top panel is a normal eye. You're looking at the retina, which is quite translucent. In the normal architecture, you see photoreceptors supported by the RPE layer, the Brooks membrane, and then the capillary system. In an eye that has uh, geographic atrophy, you can see in the center of the lower panel, um, you can see that cloudy area. Um, and that results from a drop-off in photoreceptors and RPE dropout. And then you see attenuation of the uh, capillaries that uh, uh, supply blood to the architecture in the retina. So what we're trying to do with our treatment essentially is to um, cordon off that AMD, that geographic atrophy in AMD, that central part of the central part of the eye and we will transplant cells approximately around 2 o'clock, if you look at the lower panel, approximately around 2 o'clock um, in, in, the, in the retina. And what you're looking at there, when you're looking straight down uh, through the uh, translucent part of the, the retina, you actually are looking down into the area where you've lost the photoreceptors um, and RPE. So briefly on the spinal cord, um, approximately 1.3 million in the United States, you've seen these stats before, that are being reported being paralyzed, 10 to 12,000 new patients a year, approximately 13% of no mobility whatsoever, and 35% of them have limited mobility. The majority of injuries are in the cervical region and mostly uh, are as a result of trauma. And of course, there are no effective treatments today. And this morning we announced the initiation of the phase two study, the pathway study at the University of Miami, Miller School of Medicine, which is also the home of the, um, the uh, fight to find a cure for paralysis. This is a phase two study, multi-center, single blind, randomized parallel arm, and it is a proof of concept study. We will be targeting patients who have injuries to the C5, C7 region and they will have at least 16 weeks post-injury. So this is not in the acute phase. And the patient population will have complete and incomplete injuries. The primary outcome measure is change in the ISN CSI upper extremity motor score 12 months post-transplant. I recognize that that's a mouthful, but believe me, it is a recognized international standard. Safety assessment will include uh, evaluation of pain and allodynia. So the last thing you want to do is to intervene in these patients, not provide them with any clinical benefit, but add to uh, their discomfort. So in summary, human central nervous system stem cells are first-in-class biologic with potential application for a broad array of CNS disorders. We're currently focused on dry AMD and uh, spinal cord injury. There are significant unmet clinical needs in these, both of these uh, patient populations. The interim data that we've reported to date is very compelling, and it does replicate the preclinical studies, all of which uh, have been published in peer-reviewed journals. And we will provide additional interim data from the phase one, two studies later this quarter with final results uh, by the middle of next year and we're initiating the phase twos this quarter. Picture is worth a thousand words. So as I mentioned, we've, we've transplanted 37 patients to date. That is to uh, where we are today in 2014. So you can see we have uh, a very interesting 2015 ahead of us, full of challenge but, challenge, but I think we're up to the task. And so last but not least, a little ad, ad before I close up, uh, save the date in November 20th of this year, uh, stem cells will hold an analyst day in New York City. Uh, it'll be a live webcast. 
presentations will be made by Irv Wiseman, who's uh, chair of our scientific advisory board and a member of our board of directors. There'll be presentations on the science and the biology of this incredibly uh, biologically useful uh, neural stem cell platform. Principal investigators will review data and provide updates on the ongoing clinical trials in both spinal cord injury and dry age-related macular degeneration. Um, the PIs will talk about the phase two efficacy studies, a little bit more information on the protocols and just exactly what we're doing and how we're going about it. And last but not least, a Q&A session with management, including questions that we'll take via email from the webcast participants. So I thank you very much for your uh, stamina and for staying with us and uh, enjoy your coffee break. Thank you very much.